All right, starting video number two with band cards in the Pioneer format and why they're banned. In alphabetical order, Once Upon a Time. So Once Upon a Time was banned simply because it's a free spell. Um, if you cast it on the first turn of the game or whenever before you cast your first spell, basically you get to look at the top five cards of your library, find a creature or land, put it in your hand, and go about your merry way. Uh, this was banned along with Leyline of Abundance and Oath of Nyssa initially in order to uh, kind of stifle the power of Mono Green, um, as Mono Green was one of the dominating decks in the, initially in the format. Um, not much more to say, this deck, this card is banned in Modern as well, simply because its power and consistency level are too high. Very similar to reasons why cards like Expressive Iteration and such are banned as well. Speaking of expressive iteration, I forgot this when I was covering our initial thing of the first several letters of the alphabet. Expressive iteration. This card was banned because it was making the is it decks too powerful and too consistent. Uh, anything cast after turn two, especially if you have a bunch of cheap spells in your deck, much like a lot of the is it decks do, such as Phoenix, not necessarily creativity, but generally is it Phoenix or is it prowess. Uh, this card's just too much value for what it does, especially in a lower power format like Pioneer. This card is also banned in the Legacy format, and while it is still legal in the Modern format, it is part of one of the more powerful decks in the format in Is It Murktide in Modern, so its days might be numbered in that format as well. Basically, you look at the top three cards of your library, put one in your hand, put one on the bottom of your library, one in exile that you can cast or use until the end of turn. This, they just felt this was too much power and consistency for the Izzet decks, and the Izzet decks were starting to be a little bit too powerful in the format. Now, this was before Rakdos Midrange got all of its current pieces, and this is before Mono Green's Search of Dominance. So, it is possible that maybe this banning should be revisited, as the Izzet decks could use a little bit of a boost, especially Izzet Phoenix. But, nevertheless, this is a card that is banned in Pioneer currently. Speaking of cards that are currently banned that maybe should be reconsidered, Smuggler's Copter. Now this was a card that was ubiquitous throughout all of the uh, Egger decks of the format, um, and some of the mid-range decks to a certain degree. But much like a card like Reckoner Bankbuster, this adds a good amount of consistency to a deck. And you see Reckoner Bankbuster in a lot of the mid-range decks. You see it sometimes out of Demir Rogues. You see it out of Rakdos Midrange. You see it sometimes out of Girl Vehicles. Uh, Smuggler's Copter would just show up in any aggressive deck. Um, I believe even the Burn decks were playing it, so you'd see it out of Burn, you'd see it out of Prowess, you'd see it out of Humans, you would see it out of a deck like Spirits, um, whatever form of it existed at that point, etc. So it was largely banned simply because it was an auto-include in every deck, and a large reason why people argue that a card like Fable the Mirror Breaker should be banned is it just show up, showed up in too many decks. Now that to say, um, aggro decks are among at their lowest points in the Pioneer format ever, so maybe Wizards should consider unbanning this for a boost, but as of now, it's currently banned because it was too present in other things. Now, this card I do believe was banned in Standard at the time that it was played. However, it is not banned in Modern and is not banned in Legacy. In fact, it doesn't even see play in either of those formats to speak of. Teferi Time Raveler. Now, this is a card that was banned in conjunction with Wilderness Reclamation. Um, it's one of the more annoying cards to play with alongside something like Nexus of Fate. Um, it forces your opponent to play only at sorcery speed, which means during their turn when the stack is empty. Uh, it makes counter spells ineffectual from the other side and takes away a fundamental part of what some people consider as a part of magic. Um, that said, it was a good counter to Wilderness Reclamation, uh, but they bas Wizards basically said whenever they were banning Wilderness Reclamation, the reason for Teferi Time Raveler to stay in the format just wasn't relevant. So, this card got the boot along with Wilderness Reclamation. Uh, basically, it makes counter spells useless. It really kind of provides a uh, ETB test or whatever, for, you know, so things like Shieldred and stuff would be a lot less effective in the format. Um, although this was banned before Shieldred was a thing. Basically, if your card wasn't cheap cost or had an ETB effect of some time, Teferi kind of punished you. But this card was banned in part because it was annoying to play against, and in part simply because the card that it was left in the format to counter Wilderness Reclamation got the boot as well. Under City Informer, basically the same reason Balustrade Spy got banned that we talked about in the other video. This enables you to auto mill your entire deck if you get one of these and cast it or activate its ability. So basically, they don't want the graveyard shenanigans to go along with this. 
and allowing things like Thassa's Oracle or any other type of graveyard payoff like Narc Amoeba and stuff to just be overwhelmingly powerful in the format. Underworld Breach, the second of the combo winner decks that got or cards that got banned. Um, the other card, the first one we talked about, was obviously Inverter. Underworld Breach was usually played in the Lotus Field decks and enabled you to uh, go through your deck with a card like Tome Scour, mill your entire deck, play Thassa's Oracle in the game. So, in addition to your twiddle effects being ridiculously broken with Lotus Field in the current form that they're in. This allowed you to win the game much easier, potentially on turn two, turn three, and when you combine that with uh, Demir Inverter and one of the other cards that we'll talk about a little bit later, there was simply too many combo decks in the format really for fair decks to be fair, especially since each de each combo kind of required something different to interact with. Uh, Underworld Reach kind of required Graveyard Hate, Demir Inverter kind of required Graveyard Hate, kind of required either discard or counter spells. So, you know, both things kind of require different things, and the third card required something entirely differently. Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath. This card's just too powerful. Um, it's banned in Modern. It's banned in Pioneer. Uh, it's just card value on a stick. Um, even the f first casting of it, you get to draw a card, put a land into play. So you get to ramp, get to draw a card, get to gain some life. Um, and then it's escape ability, doing the same thing, drawing a card, gaining some life, possibly putting a land in play. Um, this was just too much value for mid-range uh, creature decks to overcome. Uh, so much like Oko, it got the axe simply because it was too much value. Uh, it gets banned in modern for a very similar reason and only exists in Legacy because, well, Legacy isn't really all about creature combat and they wanted to leave one of the broken Simic cards available in the format. Veil of Summer, now this is a card that's a little weird. So, Veil is, was primarily a sideboard card, um, but basically it, much like Teferi Time Raveler, kind of invalidated some parts of Magic. It made it difficult for Counterspell decks to be relevant, and it made it difficult for Thoughtseize, which was one of the premier uh, cards in the format that we'll talk about in a different video, um, as far as the building blocks of the Pioneer format cards made it difficult for your opponent to interact with combo decks in a meaningful way, or even some fair decks. Um, so this was kind of banned because it was simply too efficient for what it does. Um, you get to nullify your opponent's counter spell, or discard spell, or removal spell if it happens to be black, and also if they've cast those cards this turn, you get to draw a card. All that for one mana, a little bit too powerful on rate for a format uh, that doesn't have things like you know Path to Exile and Holy Heat, so you have a lot lower power format in terms of the removal spells, so therefore this card kind of got the boot because it's a little too efficient for what it does. All right, Walking Ballista, the third and final piece that was banned from Combo Winner. Uh, Walking Ballista along with Heliod, Sun, was it Sun Crown? Um, he, the original Heliod God basically is an infinite combo. As long as you have two counters on Heliod, or two counters on Ballista, once you target it with Heliod and it resolves, that's instant win. Basically, you shoot your opponent, it gets a counter from the Heliod trigger. Shoot your opponent, gets a counter from the Heliod trigger. This is an infinite loop that deals infinite damage, basically when you're also gaining infinite life in the process. This was largely played in a mono-white kind of hate bears mid-range style deck, along with Demir Inverter and Lotus Field Breach. We're kind of stalwarts of the of the pioneer format and we're just simply too powerful for what was going on while this is still not banned in either modern or legacy still is a very powerful card that enables an infinite combo and that was simply one of those another one of those you know turn three turn four combos along with fellow dark guardian and such that wizards is just even too powerful for the pioneer format currently card we've alluded to with a couple of the other cards that got banned and that is wilderness reclamation um Wilderness Reclamation and Fires of Invention do very similar things in terms of cheating on mana. Um, Fires has a little bit of restriction to it because you have to play at sorcery speed and only on your turn. Whereas Wilderness Reclamation allows you to potentially, to, if you have a mainly instant speed deck, allows you to double up on your mana even the first turn you cast it. And then from then on you're just gaining exponential mana. Um, the main combo that played with this was a card like Expansion Explosion or Nexus of Fate. Uh, both of those allowing you to um, take advantage of floating mana in your end step and then untapping. 
um, and then still getting to hold up interaction from your opponent's turn so you're not punished to, you know, say like blue-white control or something today that has to, you know, tap some mana like Teferi or something during their main phase, you know, this card really kind of undoes that punishment. Um, that said, you know, they initially got Nexus of Fate banned and then eventually Expansion Explosion along with Field of Dead was just too much. And this card got the boot simply because it was too powerful for what was going on in the Pioneer format at the time. The final combo card on this list is Winota, Joiner of Forces. Now, Winota is different from a lot of the other things going on on this list. First off, there is no infinite combo with this card. So, um, there was no, like automatic this the game was over if this card was cast and resolved you know like the inverter and thassa's oracle even if you interacted with a card once it resolved the game could be over um with ballista and heliod you had a window to interact but you know your opponent could just wait and overwhelm you with like either double activations or having multiple counters on ballista etc winota was just simply a build around card uh now don't get me wrong it was extremely powerful uh, especially if you want turn one, Elvish Mystic, turn two, whatever card, you know, whether it was, you know, a uh, Goblin Rabble Master, whether it was, you know, a Voice of Resurgence. Basically, if you want turn one Dork, turn two, three drop, or two or three drop, turn three Winota, uh, you could potentially attack, get a couple of triggers off of, um, you know, Goblin Tokens or whatever, and then flip you know, Ingrass Marauders or Wolf, Wolvier, uh, the six mana Wolvier that makes two wolves when it comes into play was the one that was seeing the play at the end. And then this was also combined in the latter stages with a Seekers Chariot. So no matter what, you had two powerful four drops. So if your opponent was trying to hold up removal spells for your Winota, you could play a Seekers Chariot and then just kind of play this attrition game. Basically, it was Grease Fang before Grease Fang became a thing and was just too powerful because it didn't also get shut off by graveyard hate. It only got shut off by specific removal spells, and you could play in such a way to force your opponent to, you know, either, you know, use a wrath or um, use removal spells on other things like Asika's Chariot or other humans, um, you know, other key spells that would kind of interact with what your opponent was doing, and then just slam one Oda and then win the game on the spot with, like, 20 power from three or four Oda triggers out of nowhere. Um, this card, ironically, has never seen much play in mo Modern, which is the format above this. Um, now, it's starting to see a little bit of play in that format, but it's still nowhere near as powerful in format with things like Unholy Heat, Solitude, etc. Whereas in Pioneer, once again, the removal spells are nowhere near as good. You don't even have Path to Exile. You basically have overcosted Burn spells, a Fatal Push, 2 mana Black Removal, and now if you really want to push your deck, you have Leyline Binding. Everything else is sorcery speed, which is a nightmare when you're playing against a deck like Winota. Hence why I got the boot. It was just simply becoming too powerful. It was really this and mono green, and even mono green couldn't really compete with it. So Now, whether it could exist today with the power of Rakdos in the format, debatable, but for now, it is on the ban list. And I believe that is all of the cards on the Pioneer ban list. The only cards we didn't stock, talk about in specificity, or individually at least, were the fetch lands, but we've already kind of covered, you know, their Bloodstained Mire, Flooded Strand, um, Polluted Delta, uh, Windswept Heath, and Wooded Foothills. We already kind of alluded to them at the beginning of the first video. They want to keep Adele spells legal, want the mana to be a little bit worse, be the format a little bit differently than other eternal form formats like Modern Legacy, where those cards are just such an important part. So that is what's going on with the Pioneer and Ban list in June 2023. Don't forget to check out our first video if you haven't done that yet on the first half of why cards are banned. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hope to see you for our next video.